So in my ongoing series of rendering with dual GPUs, today we're going to be looking at V-Ray. It's a very popular software that's used in the entertainment industry, as well as architectural and photorealistic rendering. Hi everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Review, and on our channel we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. Today's technical requirement is, as we are going to look at V-Ray. So as I've already said, V-Ray is a very popular 3D renderer. It's used a lot in the entertainment industry as well as the architectural industry. It's well known for its photorealistic rendering. So today we're going to see how two RTX 3070s, two RTX 3080s, and two RTX 3090s will perform in a workstation like this one here, my Lenovo P620, and how we can use V-Ray to increase our productivity. So before we go any further, I'd just like to say, don't forget to hit that like button. Not enough people are hitting the like button or the subscribe button on my channel. Don't forget to hit notifications so you can be notified when I do release new videos. Visit the Discord chat server. There is a link in the comment section below. And don't forget to leave a comment. I do respond to all the comments on my channel. Let's help build a community or a place where people can go and get information when they're trying to increase the productivity in their studios. So I just wanted to add a question of the day. If you're using V-Ray, what GPU are you using to render your productions? I also want to make a call out to anybody that has a V-Ray scene that they would like to donate to the channel so that we can start using it for benchmarking. I do have some scenes that I've downloaded, but I'd like to find something that's a little more production worthy, something that's gonna stress out the GPUs. I will give credit to every artist that does supply a scene, and you can contact me through the Facebook link that's in the comment section below. V-Ray is a very popular 3D rendering software. You can use it either on the CPU or the GPU, but today we'll be looking at it exclusively for GPU rendering. So as many of the people in the industry are using V-Ray, I thought that we again could take a look at how we can increase performance using one and two GPUs, as well as which one will be the best bang for the buck GPU. So stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna be showing you some performance charts of all of these GPUs. So we're gonna take a look at three different scenes that I've downloaded off the V-Ray website. And one of the popular ones that is used by other reviewers is the bee and flower scene. So once you have the scene open, just go into your render settings and just make sure that you're under V-Ray GPU. If you come over to the perf tab, you can see that it is using both of the RTX 3090s for this render. And we're gonna try the CUDA out first. So I did make some changes to the scene as well. I set the resolution to 2550 by 1440, as well as the samples down to 200. And then I added a denoise just so we can get a good render. So for anybody that wants to try out the scene themselves and they download it from the internet, there is a link in the comments section below if you'd like to try this out. And please, if you do, just post what your render times were and what your system that you're rendering it on so others can have a reference to how well the scene renders on their equipment. So while the scene is rendering out, again, we can use our hardware monitor and just come over and see how much memory and CPU utilization is being used. So although it's using 100% of the GPU, it's only using about 18% of the memory on the first GPU. And on the second, it's 100% and 21% of the memory. So this scene obviously doesn't take a lot of VRAM in order to render. So there the render is complete and it's completed in about 45 seconds. So that was pretty quick. So now we're gonna check out Maya. I've downloaded a character animation off the V-Ray website, just so we can see how it renders out for more character animation style rendering. So now that we have the scene open in Maya, we just come up and we notice that it's on V-Ray renderer. So you just wanna make sure that it's under V-Ray GPU and you'll notice here is the RTX button for those that want to try the RTX or the optics version of the renderer. And down here under V-Ray Render Device Selection, you can see that it has recognized both RTX 3090s. So let's just click the Render button and see how long this takes. And again, we'll bring up our hardware monitor so we can monitor the renderer. So here we're looking at about 96 to 100% with only 20% of the memory used for the 24 gigabytes of GDR6 memory on the graphic card. And the same with the second GPU, it's 100% and only 25% of the memory. So it rendered this image out pretty cleanly. You know, it's, it's not the highest resolution and you can still see a lot of anti-aliasing along the edges, but it rendered it out in about a minute and five seconds. So, but this still is a good benchmark to see how long, you know, a character animation might take you to render with V-Ray. So for anybody that's been watching this series on rendering with dual GPUs, in the Blender version, I did download a scene called the Sobo Noodle House, but I was able to find the same scene with 3D Max using the V-Ray renderer. So let's see how that renders out. So here I have the scene open in 3D Max. Now it's the exact same scene that was rendered in Blender, except the artist has converted it over to 3D Max so they could use V-Ray. So again, under V-Ray, we wanna make sure that we are using the GPU renderer. And I'm just checking to make sure that the software has recognized both of the GPUs. So we'll hit render and we'll see how long that takes. So the render's complete and it rendered out pretty quickly. 
So we're looking at about two minutes and 41 seconds to render, and it's a very clean render. So there's a little bit of noise in some of the textures, but for the complexity of the scene, it rendered fairly quickly on the two RTX 3090s. So as you can see with these tests, you know, using single and two GPUs with V-Ray can really help the performance in your workflow. So let's take a look at the charts and see how each GPU performed with single and dual GPUs for every category. So you can see here with using the V-Ray benchmark, we got a pretty decent score with one RTX 3070 with 1341. And that pretty much doubled as soon as we add the second GPU. But the percentage gain between one RTX 3090 and one RTX 3080 was only about 20%. And that carried over as well with the RTX 3090. So using the benchmark tool is not the greatest measurement of your GPUs. You need to actually use scenes. So when we take a look at the flower scene, we notice that one RTX 3070 rendered it in about 27 seconds. And we did get the almost 50% increase when we added the second GPU. So the percentage difference between all the GPUs on this chart is about the same as the benchmark chart, but you gotta remember that this scene wasn't very complex. When we look at our character animation scene, we have about 100% improvement under each GPU, but the gap between the RTX 3070 and the RTX 3080 is a little larger at about a 30% improvement, but then that gap narrows a little bit between the RTX 3090 and the RTX 3080 was only about 20%. But when we're looking at a more complex scene like the Sobo Noodle House, you can see that we did not get our 100% improvement. And you can see that the difference between an RTX 3080 and an RTX 3090 is only about a 10% improvement. And that gap narrowed even more when we had two RTX 3080s versus two RTX 3090s. So as you can see from the test, using the V-Ray renderer with multiple GPUs can be a benefit for your workflow. But again, it all depends on the complexity of your scenes and how much VRAM you're gonna need. So I hope this video helped out when you're looking to purchase a new graphic card for your production workflow. So that'll about wrap it up for this video, but if you're using V-Ray, what GPU are you using? And maybe you'd like to download some of the scenes that I use and then post your comments below of how long it took on your system. And maybe you could just post what kind of system you're rendering it on. That way other artists and anybody else using V-Ray has a bit of a reference for the equipment that they're using to see if it's working to its maximum performance. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications, visit the Discord chat server. There's a link in the comment section below. And maybe you could help promote this video on your Facebook so we can build a larger community for a place where people can go and get information when they're trying to increase their render performance or increase their productivity. I really enjoyed doing this video for you and I'll see you in the next one.